This episode was brought to you by Slate Black Industries. For M-Lock grips and accessories, visit slateblackindustries.com. Decades since its first appearance, the Kalashnikov's accuracy remains a point of debate in the West. Some say that the factory AKs are one MOA rifles and even with steel-cased ammunition. Some say that they can't hit the broad side of the barn with its iron sights. Today, we have 10 classic factory-built AK examples. We'll clock their 9-shot grouping accuracy and see which one ranks up top. We will then discuss how grouping accuracy applies to the fighting rifle. And we have on the lineup, from Bulgaria's City of Roses, are three different rifles from the Circle 10 Arsenal AD factory. The SLR-104FR, an AK-74 TDP clone. The SLR-107, the 7.62 version of that previous rifle. And the early import SLR-104UR, an AKS-74U copy. From mainland China, the Norinco Preban Type 56. And from Mother Russia, the original Izhevs factory and home of the AK, the Izhmash AK-103, the AK-9er, and the Izhmash AK-74. From Romania, and one of America's favorites, from the Kudir factory, the Wasser 10. From Israel, and often rejected by the AK purist community, the Galil Ace. And as a bonus, even though it's not an AK, from the beautiful Czech Republic, the VZ-58. Which one shall come up top? Go ahead and comment below right now to see if you're right at the very end. And spoiler alert, None of these are 1MOA rifles, but certainly effective to torso-sized targets at respective distances. Now, here are a few points of consideration for our test. These are all foreign military factory rifles. Most of the examples are shot with a 4X ACOG ACSS reticle scope. We specifically chose the Chevron type reticles because Chevrons provide a finite aiming point. Targets may not be centered, since we swapped the same scope around. The same ammunition was also used in all examples with the same caliber. A military, non-corrosive, non-steel core Russian Bernal 7.62x39, or a Bernal 5.45x39, or a Magtech .223 cartridge. All rifles were shot between two days and two rifle sessions with the same shooter. We did this to be as consistent as possible with a shooter's condition, but also to decrease the possibility of shooter fatigue. We will rank these rifles by their 80% group size, but mention the entire 9-shot group size as well. The 80% ranking reflected more of our observations from previous practical accuracy tests. We do want to thank Scott from RS Regulate for sending the mounts for this test. We were going to buy some anyways, but when he heard about it, he just sent these in. Now let's get on with it. Let's see where these rifles ranked in our comparison. As a control, the shooter, me. I shot this Accuracy International AE with its scope locked up at 4x at the 100 yard line on start of day one. Yielding this 0.61 inch 9 shot grouping with a 0.38 inch 80% screw. Now, without further ado, let's see where these rifles ranked in our comparison.
coming up last in the pack, to nobody's surprise, the AKS-74U or SLR-104UR from Bulgaria shot a lazy near 6-inch 80% group or a 7.4-inch 9-shot group. While in our practical accuracy test, this rifle was able to reach a 500-yard target, it showed serious issues of degradation in accuracy at the 250 to 300 meter zone. Now the AKS-74U was designed more as a PDW than a main rifle, and its limited accuracy certainly reflects this. SLR-107, the Bulgarian reverse adaptation of the AK-74 to take the 7.62x39 cartridge, much like the AK-103. Now the SLR-107 grouped a 3.55-inch 80% group and a 3.74-inch full grouping. Coming in at number 8, the Russian AK-74 with a 3.5-inch 80% group and a 3.74 9-shot grouping. Like the SLR-107, these numbers are extremely close, meaning that there weren't really any outliers. Despite its appearance, this example was built from a Saiga 5.45 rifle. Its internals are actually closer to an AK-74M than the old AKS-74 pattern. But the next three are really splitting hairs with the 80% groups. Coming in at number 7, the Romanian Wasser 10 with a 2.863 inch 80% group, but the outlier shot bumped the full group up into a 4.687 inch 9 shot group. Now even though the trigger was handedly the worst of all examples tested today, and Sentry in fact forgot to put the trigger pin retaining plate or shepherd's crook in. We could not deny that the Wasser actually put up a decent group. Which brings us to number 6, the Bulgarian SLR 104 FR at a 2.859 inch 80% group and a 2.8889 shot group. The Bulgarian 104FR is a full clone of the Russian AKS-74 with their technical data package, meaning that they have the exact same dimensions. Number 5. The Chinese Norinco Type 56 at a 2.846 inch 80% group and an outlier unfortunately bumping it up to a 4.3 inch 9 shot group. Since it did not have an accessory rail or a rail dust cover, this was shot with iron sights only. And this is the closest to the original Type 3 AK-47 pattern of this group, lending this to be the oldest design of all rifles shown today. Coming in at number 4, the Russian AK-103, scoring a 2.765 inch 80% group with a 2.92 inch 9 shot group. We've covered the AK-103 in the past and despite its scoring in the upper half of the pack with a very consistent grouping, the Russians were actually less worried about increasing the accuracy of the platform, but more so thinking about trying to add features and manufacturing interchangeability. But ultimately, this resulted in a very nice platform for the 7.62x39 deployment. Number 3 
the Russian AK-102 or in current form the AK-9er with a 2.31 inch 80% group and a 3.072 inch 9 shot group. While this was built to the AK-100 series line, it ended up as a Saiga 223, which was later converted back by us to its original form. Now the 5.56 variant here puts up a much more respectable group than some of its 7.62 counterparts, and this potentially draws ideas of limitations in our ammunition. Perhaps this is an indication for more research to be done. As a runner-up, in the second place, the Czech VZ58, running an 80% grouping at 2.133 inches and a 2.412 9 shot group. It's not a Kalashnikov, but it still sees use in the battlefield as a substitute for the AK rifle. The champion of this exercise, behold, the Israeli Galil 32 or Galil Ace, slinging the 7.62x39 into a 2.071 inch 80% grouping with a 2.432 inch 9 shot group. The Israeli milled receiver achieves a much more solid mating and lockup for the two lugged AK bolt and the two-stage trigger was very easy to feel a break, and the top rail allows for a seamless topside mounting of any optic. And so there you go, Galil lovers. Bask in it, the glory. But hold your horses. There's much more to it than just an accuracy ranking. Consider also the following points. These are combat rifles, designed with combat accuracy in mind. They were made to impact torso-sized targets at 400 meter plus. Most of these rifles had no issue keeping 100% of the rounds within a 4-inch group and the 80% groupings for these rifles honestly spanned from 2 to 3.5 inches, except for the Krinkov. At 100 meters, this is what a 1 inch group looks like on a torso sized target. 2 inches, 3 inches, and finally 4 inches. Suffice to say, 1 to 4 inch groups are very well effective for combat accuracy within 100 meters. In fact, most all of these 2 to 4 MOA AKs have no issues hitting the 500 yard gong twice on our practical accuracy test. And how is that possible? This is what 4 inches looks like on an IPSC target at 100 yards, 4 MOA at 200 yards, 300 yards, 400 yards, and finally, 4 MOA at 500 yards or 451 meters. It's a 20 inch circle assuming zero wind conditions, roughly the width of a human torso. These rankings are in line with our practical accuracy result. The scope ready Galil Ace places the highest of all 7.62x39 currently. And the iron sighted VZ58 is a ranking 7.62x39 rifle in iron sights. Our tendencies to gauge everything worthwhile only if it's 1 to 2 MOA accurate makes no sense in regards to combat accuracy. Fit and finish matters. So the Wasser is just as good as your Arsenal SLR. Nate, Nate, better than your Arsenal SLR. The problem with only testing for hard accuracy is that you don't take in consideration fit and finish, QC, gassing, and how well a rifle handles. When we did preliminary looks at multiple AES-10Bs, the Romanian RPK or the Wasser's big cousin, 
It had multiple missed components, bent gas tubes, and severe accuracy problems. Uh, that was left of the left target next to it. While the Wasser scored decently on its 80% accuracy, it had parts missing. It had a rough magwell for reloading, and downright it had the worst trigger of all. The Arsenal's SLR, on the other hand, were just as smooth as the Russian rifles. Accessories matter. I personally love my VZ58 but the accessories for it are incredibly slim compared to the stamped Kalashnikov in 7.62. This doesn't apply to the collector, but neither does accuracy. If you want performance, the Russian pattern stamped AK-74 AKM platforms have the most triggers, gas components, compensators, stocks, and pistol grips available. Our AK-9er Mark II was a good example of how accessories enhance a rifle. Our friend Clayco's Galil Ace here is another good example of how you could fully deck out a Galil Ace. Unfortunately for me, this amount of options do not exist for the VZ-58. Ultimately, caliber matters when the winds kick, distance, or if you need less recoil, or if you want a higher carrying capacity. Despite all these 7.62x39 rifles doing relatively well at 100, you can see all of them suffering when it hits the 400 yard line. The 7.62x39 cartridge starts to struggle with wind at this distance, though it can be compensated with good reticle designs like the ACSS. Just off the right edge. Impact. It still takes experience. Neutralized. The 7.62 also recoils more than the 5.45 and 5.56, making follow-up shots slower. <laughs> Not so good. If you don't need distance, this applies less. But again, a 2 or 3.5 MOA for 8 out of 9 shots is a minuscule difference if you are looking at hitting a torso at 100 meters. Now the Kalashnikov was designed as a combat rifle, not a target rifle. However, it would be naive to think that one of the most cloned rifle designs struggles to hit a human target at regular combat ranges. Again, these rifles tested today keep 100% of their rounds within a 4 inch group, which is smaller than your head at 100 yards, and 2 to 3.5 inches is plenty to hit a torso at 500 yards. However, the fit and finish makes some more easy to shoot and control than others. We had 100% rounds fired with 0% failures. Not all designs have the same amount of aftermarket support. Yeah, it feels more like an AK. Yeah. Caliber matters once you look at other aspects of shooting, like distance, wind, carrying load, recoil impulse, and speed of manipulation. So there you go. A culmination of a few years' data helped us look back at comparing 10 popular AK variants from their respective factories worldwide. What has been your experience with the AK? Tell us in the comments. And until next time, we'll see you on the range. So I've been advised by my lawyer that I ought to read the following holding statement that I obviously wrote by myself. Otherwise, I will get dragged out of my residence by a bunch of clash boys from the forums and likely murdered. So here we go. We shot singular groups with singular rifle representations with single ammunition types. So are we saying implicitly that within the core of the rifles for this test, that one is better than the others. Absolutely not. While we had fun with our rankings, the core of these rifles are here to show you the overall average group sizes of the Clash platform as a whole, and how that translates 
into combat accuracy, which we talked about. It's entirely possible that if we shot these rifles again, especially those within the core of the results, could easily shoot slightly tighter or slightly looser groups. And so there you have it. Obviously heartfelt, obviously my statement. I, I also like uh, moist nuggets, so you know, same team. Okay, до свидания.